Christmas trees aren't American, mm. but we love Christmas trees. Who doesn't love a good Christmas tree? Yes, but the Christmas tree is German. <laughs> and Santa Claus is not American, but we've made him American, just like we make every German and Yugoslavian and Russian and Pole and, and Mexican and Honduran and Chinese person, we make them all American. They come here and they become American. accepted foreigners, uh, first generation Americans uh, uh, and immigrants in a way that no other industry did. Um, um, you know, European Jews fleeing oppression founded the American movie industry and then turned it around and exported all of that to the rest of the world. So um, um, I, think, I, I think that that, that is what makes American culture so powerful in the, in the global marketplace. Good answer. Um, on another note, what part or area of America is the most American? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. That's that's impossible to. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Amber waves of grain, purple mountain majesties. It's. Uh, I mean, I, I was born in Philadelphia, so I was naturally raised with with the notion of those brick buildings and that bell, and that toehold on the continent being the cradle of liberty, the birthplace of American democracy, the birthplace of the country. Um, but the first time I ever saw the West, I couldn't believe it. And that, ironically, was felt like the place where the American dream was born, even though the people who founded the country had no way of knowing what that even looked like. So I don't, I don't think, I think it's interesting that a country that invented itself and a country whose population is 
99% derived from elsewhere has been able to identify so strongly with this land in all these different ways. Uh, the coasts, the mountains, the plains, the swamps, everything. Um, so much so that people who've never even been to the Grand Canyon would vote to make it one of America's biggest natural symbols. So that's kind of, I don't know how that is exactly, but, but maybe, it, maybe it follows the same notion that American culture spreading around the globe follows, that, that there are common denominators and antecedents in all of this that just strike a chord with people. So you want to say like a farmland in the Midwest or like you said, East Coast, birth, birth, birthplace of our nation. Yeah, and I mean, I've lived in the Midwest and the Midwest is beautiful and you definitely have a sense of Americanness ness yeah. when you see a country road with cornfields on the side or soybeans on one side and, and corn, corn on the other. Um, um, and you have a sense of being in America when you see the Mississippi River for the first time, um, or when you're, you know, when you see the coast of California. Um, but uh, but I can't say that any of them feels more American. Um, I mean, my grandmother's family farmed a valley in upstate Pennsylvania, and when we buried her in the churchyard, which was up on a knoll. Uh, you could look in 360 degrees from that knoll at the entire valley and there was not a place you can look where there is not a person that I am related to. All of that land is somehow or other in this large extended family of farmers that, that settled the valley before the Civil War that came off from a branch of the family from Connecticut that came in 1689. And you could say that there's nothing more American than that. But at the same time, if I go to New Mexico and I look at the cliffs or I look at the red rocks or I look at a farm in Iowa that was settled a hundred years later, they all feel just as American to me. That's good. All right, one of the last few questions. Um, can you name five characteristics that are most American to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one. <laughs> No. Uh, five characteristics that are most American. Just off the top of your head. Um, or how do you think uh, foreigners view us? I think, well, I think a foreign caricature of an American would be uh, someone who is loud, uh, someone who is. Uh, uh, opinionated, someone who is uh, 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 well, let's forget about what the stereotypes would be. Um, I think I think some things that that could be defined as American characteristics, but by no means only American characteristics, would be um, uh, a great degree of optimism, um, a, a striving for success or happiness or however you want to define that, um, um, a generosity of spirit, um, um, I 
I think that's probably it. That's good. Um, oh, and openness, I think. Um, um, now, all of these things can be contradicted. At, at the moment, people might say that th at this particular moment in American history, we are the least like any of that as, as a whole. But um, I think I think historically and individually, if you broke all the people down, you would still find those, those common characteristics. And I mean, those can be found in other countries as well, but as a nation, I'm, I'm not sure it's quite as prevalent. And uh, lastly, has America been has America been good to you? <laughs> and if it hasn't, if there is there anything that could make it better? I I don't think for you specifically, you your family. Yes, America has been good to us, good for us. I mean, it's it's. Yes, I mean, it's allowed us to prosper with, in all meanings of that word, with, uh, uh, you know, a minimum amount of, of interference, a maximum amount of help. Um, um, you know, the, the interesting thing I think about post-World War II America or post Teddy Roosevelt America, if you want to go back that far, is that um, um, it's not simply that we all have total freedom and are untethered. We, we have, over the course of the 20th century, tried, I think, very hard to work on leveling that playing field for, for everyone to make sure that everyone has at least the opportunity um, um, on, a, on as equal a footing as possible. Um, I think if we've failed anywhere, it's in that. And at the moment, we seem to be going backward. For me personally, I've benefited from that. Um, um, if my skin was a different color, I could very easily in my lifetime say that I have not benefited in that way. Um, to as great a degree, and I could have even suffered a great degree because of that. So um, that would be also the the place in which I think we can do better. Um, and I think interestingly, that's I'm not saying that as a I'm not saying that as a as an act of charity to myself. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is that a level playing field, while a lot of people would say a level playing field would hurt a person like me, um, in general, because the country would be better off and everyone would be better off. And yes, I might find myself more challenged as a white man. Um, um, that kind of challenge can be good. Uh, that kind of challenge can make my life better in ways I can't necessarily conceive. Um, and of course, it would give me the satisfaction of knowing that, that my success is not being had at, at the expense of somebody else. Um, Great. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, I just need a minute of room tone. Just uh, don't say anything. Just sit. Okay. And then after after we get the room tone, can we? Uh, can you just give me a forty-eight, and we'll do an entrance with mm -hmm. the, with this lens. Sure. Okay. So one so minute room, of room tone. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. One minute. Sorry, Andy. Okay. <clears throat>